quiet at the moment. We've got some moderator questions uh, prepared, and uh, we're just going to have a discussion. Right. Shall we talk among ourselves for a minute, or do we want to just sort of delve into the moderator to start with? Should we get into the moderator? Is anybody who's posted questions, are they about yet or not? Uh, Rob posted a question. I can't hear you, Rob. <laughs> Oh dear. Mm -hmm. Nope. I haven't muted him. <laughs> you can try the eject button. Wait, not yet. Yeah, it's a problem. No, no, no. <laughs> Rob, can you actually hear us? Do you want to just answer in chat if you can? Because we can't hear you. Well, what I'm going to do at this stage, I'm going to put this moderator in chat, and I'm going to go and invite some more people. Maggie, do you want to take a couple of questions from the moderator while I uh, while I go and try and get some more people in here? Yes. What you're going to go outside and drag them in? <laughs> well, yeah, that's it. I'm going to get them off the street now. <laughs> Right, okay. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I can pick some more to actually invite. Right, and um, first one we've got is, um, hi Matt, I've noticed several in, but that's irrelevant. Well, I've just, noticed several you know, in, but... Of random, this is... Yeah, go on. Sorry. Sev several inbound links in our webmaster tool profile from pages that do not have actual links to our site but do spell out our URL. Is Google now considering mention of a domain as a rank factor and is it equivalent to an inbound link? John? Um, um. What? Wait. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was busy thinking about something else. Um, several inbound links that do not have actual links. Uh, yes. So basically, when we recognize URLs, even in a text form, we can sometimes pick those up for discovery. So what will happen is if we haven't seen those URLs before, we'll follow them and try to see if there's something new and exciting that we can crawl there. So it's not something that would be passing page rank. So it's similar to a nofollowed link. So you also don't have to worry about those kind of links if they're from problematic sites. But uh, we use that to try to discover pages that we haven't found otherwise. So if Google is Google considering that as a ranking factor? Um, it's not directly a ranking factor in the sense that we don't use it to change the rankings for your content, but if we otherwise don't find your content uh, by crawling your website, by crawling other websites, then of course showing up in the search results compared to not showing up in the search results could be seen kind of as a ranking factor. And it's not really the equivalent to an inbound link because these kind of links don't pass in page rank. Thank you, John. Um, somebody asking about the link disavowal tool. Is is that going to happen? That's something we've kind of been looking into. I mean, it's something that uh, a lot of webmasters have brought up as being kind of a, a problem in, in that they try to clean up the links pointing to their sites, and maybe uh, the other webmaster isn't responding to their emails or doesn't just doesn't want to remove those links. 
then sometimes there's not much more that a webmaster can do. So it's something that our engineers have been looking into and uh, seeing if there's something that we need to do there or something that could help kind of um, ease the webmaster's worries. Not to put words in uh, Susan's mouth, but uh, I think last time Susan was on, she did mention also that um, it was not necessarily uh, that high of a priority right now just because it affects such a small user base compared to the large overall masses that they need to be doing. So I think it's more of a prioritization exercise whether or not it will happen or not. So I think to, to a large extent, our algorithms work really well in that they recognize these kind of links and just ignore them automatically. So it's not something that every webmaster has to do and uh, kind of worry about. And they don't have to go through all of their backlinks and say, oh, oh my god, there's this forum that was spamming me in 1998. I have to clean this link up. Uh, it's really the case that we try to look at the overall picture. And if we see that there's an overall organic picture there, then that's usually enough for our algorithm. So it's not something that's really critical or problematic. Does anybody know how it's working with um, with Bing, with their, their disavowal tool, whether that's, um, I don't suppose any of us keep much of a close eye on Bing, but I was just wondering if, if there had been I feedback from other people on it, on whether it had helped them. I don't know. No. The interesting <laughs> thing about Bing is that um, you don't really get too much feedback on um, whether or not you have bad links or where you potentially would have bad links, even though it's been stated many times that links are still a, a pretty strong factor in being. It's one of those things where I don't really know if I have a problem. They don't have any notification system or anything like that then? I mean, they've gotten a lot better, and their, web, their webmaster tools have gotten really good in the last year. Um, the last revision, they've done a pretty awesome job. Um, but yeah, I just, I mean, I, I don't think it's as forefront as uh, when you see it, uh, uh, a message come in um, on Google Webmaster Tools. Yeah. Sash, were you successful in uh, drumming up more interest? Well, I was successful in sending more invites, let's put it that way. I don't <laughs> have that more interest. Still seems to be <coughs> devilishly quiet. Yeah. Never mind. Let's keep going with the moderator. Do you want to carry on with some questions, Sash? Yeah, go on. Pull, pull some more questions out. I'm going to find some more people. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Um, I have a client that received an unnatural links warning, and later this site was penalized. We've asked all the spammy sites to remove the links, which uh, I didn't build, he, he, he claims, but only 1% complied. What else are we to do? Could it be negative SEO? Um, so, at least from our point of view, in situations like that, I think it's really important for us to see that you've uh, given significant effort to clean those links up. So, the one thing we recommend doing in a case like that is to kind of document what you've been doing, to document the links that you found, document the, the contact attempts that you've had, maybe in a Google spreadsheet, for example and to include that with the reconsideration request. That way, the web spam team can kind of take a look at what's been going on there, and maybe they can do something to just uh, ignore those links from uh, a manual action point of view, so that it basically changes from a broad web spam action against your site to something very specific for, for those specific links. Uh, so ju just uh, offering um, sort of a documentation of, of the steps you have taken is, is sufficient to um, put you in a rather better position with the spam team? Well, that definitely helps. So in, in a lot of these cases, the web spam team sees input from webmasters in the reconsideration request forms, where basically the webmaster just says, oh, I have no idea what, I, what was going on here. And when the web spam team takes a look at it, they see that this guy is still like spamming the forums and doing this and doing that. Whereas on the other hand, if uh, someone 
Ooh, oh my god, somebody's got an echo. On the other hand, if someone has been doing like a lot of work to try to clean that up and to really get rid of as many of these problematic links as possible, then that helps the weapon spam team to understand that they've been doing a lot of work here and they're basically in a place where they can't do much more. So in those cases, sometimes the web spam team, team can help to clean that up. Oh, great. Well, thank you, John. I think uh, one thing to add to that, I'm not sure if this is still the case, John, but um, I was told in the past that also uh, when you're filing a reconsideration request that if you own multiple sites or you manage multiple sites, um, that you should also uh, document and make an attempt if you have anything bad in those other particular sites because your one site, if you've done work on um, and you're not doing it to like the ton of other sites that may also have similar problems that um, the reconsideration request might get kicked back just because they're not quite sure that, although you fixed it for one site, whether or not you're going to be doing it for the remainder of the suite of sites that you manage. Usually that's more a problem if you have a, like a collection of sites that are all doing something similarly bad. So in most cases that's not something that you kind of run into. But uh, if you do have a collection of websites that are all do or were all doing something kind of problematic with regards to the, the web spam guidelines, then that's something that you might want to document as well. Whereas if it's just a single site and you have two or three other websites which, which are basically completely unrelated and working normally, then it's not that you'd have to document that kind of relationship. Hey, can people hear me? Yep. No. <laughs> okay, I had a heck of a time. Hey, you guys, I had a heck of a time getting on this event. And I, I stayed up till 2 a.m., or I woke up at 2 a.m. I'm in the Philippines. <laughs> and I, I couldn't get an invite or something. I didn't know how to get on. Where have you been all these years? Well, I must have been doing something, right? Because you're here now. <laughs> well, yeah, but. Uh, Thank you, guys. Yeah, but I begged like all over. I'm like, please help me, please help me, please help me. <laughs> Somebody find it. I got in somehow. I don't even know how I got in. This is one of my first hangouts. Well, it's good to so see you. <laughs> yeah, hey, my, my name is Patrick Sexton, Feed the Bot, and uh, I know a lot of you guys, or at least I've chatted with some of you, and it's good to be here. What have you been doing all these years? Well, it's good to have you. Well, I, I've, uh, I've been doing a lot of stuff, but basically, what, what's important is I'm back into the webmaster community in a big way. I read it, feed the bot. I'm going to be back in the forums. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of things with you guys now. So I hope you like me because you're stuck with me. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> We're warned. <laughs> I don't know. Do you guys remember him from uh, the Google Groups? He used to be in the webmaster Google Groups like... I don't know, maybe six years ago, something like that. Yeah, it's it was, been a while. It was, I was going to say, you know. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, what, what happened to me is uh, I made a whole bunch of money and I just started sailing around the world and I did stuff like that. But now, now I live in the Philippines and I'm, I'm uh, kind of living in one place. And when I'm living in one place, I just want to join stuff like this. <laughs> Tell us how to make money. You want to know how to make money? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 would, I would suggest following my blog at feedthebot.com, my brand new blog. Um, did, did you guys see what happened with the webmaster uh, guidelines? On my, did you guys see that? Which was Maybe. that? Well, John, do you know what happened? He knows. <laughs> so anyways, no, I, I uploaded a the new Google guidelines that I saw that were updated and they were the wrong ones and they weren't supposed to come out for like a long time or something but Google made a mistake and put them up live I put them all on my blog and then I'm telling Matt Cuts I'm like there's a whole bunch of HTML errors in this man like you guys are sucking and then he's like oh this is the wrong entire one and I'm like oh shit I just put them all up live and uh, 
anyways, I took them down. I ended up taking them down, but some people got copies of it. So, um, I, I so basically, Google's. if if people are gonna start getting kicked at index and doing all sorts of things, it's your fault. That's what we're saying here, right? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's it's something. I mean, we always work on improving the documentation, and uh, that also includes the webmaster guidelines. So, I think what happened there is that we just accidentally published some draft in between. So, I imagine at some point in the future we'll be seeing some of those updates in a more refined way with valid HTML. Valid HTML would be good. Or at least readable HTML. Uh, <laughs> sometimes these CMS systems create their own brand of valid HTML. So, well, yeah, I understand. <laughs> so, before we delve into the um, back into the moderator, anybody have any questions? Hey, Baruch, by the way. Hi, hey, Josh. Josh. How are you? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Hey, Thomas. Hello. We sound again. I created a I created a shirt just for this hangout for today. We can't see what's on it. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Why am I the only dedicated? <laughs> Why did you guys do that? There we go. I assume the sound is working again. There we go. Yes, I, I can hear it. That's working. See, we coordinated that, John. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, not not that they're related directly, but yes. <laughs> well, you don't know what color hat he's wearing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I saw some in fluctuations um, starting like from Monday, and then it kind of stopped a bit. Um, weird stuff, and then uh, I I don't know, like it was kind of weird. I saw some. Weird how? Um, I saw like sites that uh, were like on page ten, all of a sudden on page one, and I even uh, timed it, and it was like six hours later, the sites were gone, <clears throat> back to their place. Hmm. What is that, John? Like, is that just volatile? Fluctuations. I. I mean. It can be a lot of things. We, we do a lot of tests on the one hand. It could be yeah. something like that. It could be that you were hitting a different data center in between. Maybe there was something with the routing that we had to route you to a different place during that time. So oh, OK. So could sometimes. Be, could be a lot of things. Oh, OK. But uh, these, these kind of fluctuations can happen. Yeah, and everything just came back to normal. Yeah. Well, to where to where the normal uh, where I saw them before. So after that, yeah. Yeah, that's possible. I mean, it's it's really hard to say in specific because there's so many possibilities that could be affecting a site and that could be affecting the search results. So, can you yeah. elaborate more on uh, the uh, the keywords uh, for the news? The meta keywords? I don't know what's involved there. So the news team is a little bit different with regards to their indexing and ranking. So I, I don't know what specifically they were looking into there. So like people like Eric uh, can use uh, these keywords for his publishing company, right? Like for his. But that would be within Google News then. So it's not something that would be affecting the site when it's showing up in normal web search. Oh, okay, okay. I see. All right. So they're they're allowed to add like ten keywords, right? I don't know the details. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, and I like the new uh, uh, tool, the uh, the short snippet thing. You guys uh, did uh, structured data viewer. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Short snippets testing tool. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's something we, we've been working on quite a bit to kind of make that a little bit easier for webmasters and a little clearer what kind of rich snippets they might see in search results. Yeah, that was good. One of those questions. Richard, um, it's no, sorry, I was going to say, hey, Richard, it's ludicrously early. You're in, in your end of the world, um. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> Big trick. No, it's not. It's not. I'm in Dublin. I'm going back. I'm only here for a few weeks. Uh, I'm going back on Sunday to my part of the world. Alright. I'm, I'm, I'm unhappy. <laughs> It, it looks like I bounced out our friend from the Philippines who looked like uh, a character that we all need to keep an eye on, I think. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. <laughs> and if, he, if he's watching, it was very nice to meet you. Hopefully I'll meet you in person next uh, hangout if you jump back in. I have to leave in a little bit, so maybe I'll leave some room nope. for him. He'll probably come back in. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Okay, well, shall we head back to the moderator, or what are we doing? Shall I carry on with the moderator, or would you pick them up? Yeah, no, it's, you 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 can be in charge of the moderator tonight. Thank you. I'll keep an eye. I'll keep an eye, and I'll do crowd control. How's that? Okay, <laughs> they look they look quite safe. <laughs> Um, this is this is this this is a regular one, isn't it? I have a national business that serves the entire country, but have trouble ranking for local queries, e.g., Chicago widgets, because I don't have a physical location in every city. How can I tell Google that I'm relevant for these queries? Um, those are, I guess, always kind of tough situations because, on the one hand, you might want to mention the, the city names, but on the other hand, you don't want to just like dump 1,000 city names into your website uh, if you don't have specific content for those individual places. So usually what I'd recommend is just working to be the best national site that you can possibly be without uh, trying to keyword stuff all of those city names into that. And I think one thing to always also kind of watch out for is when people are searching for city names in particular, they probably want a local business someplace local that they can go to. So even if they find your site in the search results, that's not necessarily a sign that they would actually want to buy something from some global distributor or reseller. They might prefer to actually find a local site. So I work just hard to make sure that on a global basis this website is as good as it can possibly be so that everyone has a chance to find that site in the search results. And uh, I try to avoid just uh, throwing all of these thousands of city names onto the website or onto separate pages just in an attempt to try to fill content for, for those places. Actually, on, on, on that, I, I just happened to see um, an hour or two back that um, Walmart created 3,500 Facebook pages for their stores to rank them locally, they hoped. And they've just tanked because people, if they're looking for a local store, they're looking for a local store. They're not looking for a, a national store and just the, the, the local version of it. No. I, which I, I suppose is the same sort of thing. I think in that case, it's almost like borderline, I think, because they do have a physical presence in those locations. So if you're looking for a local store, then you can drive up to the local Walmart and you can find whatever you're looking for there. So those are probably situations where I think it could be possible to create separate pages for each of your locations. Whereas if you're just a global store and you mail out the content, uh, the products, or if you have an online service, that you provide, then if someone is searching for a business uh, type with a city name, then they're probably not looking for some kind of business like that. Thank you. Is there any? Three. Well, I mean, Sash, you ought to develop that one. No, I was. I was just. I was just going to say. I mean, as far as it goes, God knows how long. How long did we see it in the forums and everywhere else, where where everybody and his brother was going so and so in Atlanta and so and so in Philadelphia and Chicago and Detroit and name them, you know. Um, <laughs> I don't think we want to go back there, do we? 
So I, I think from our point of view, one big problem is that a lot of times these pages are either keyword stuffing, in that they're just listing a ton of cities on the, in the footer somewhere, or they're just duplicating thousands of pages by just changing the city name, or by scraping some um, uh, demographic data and providing that for every city name to act like they have unique content for each city. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of content that is really low quality that our algorithms don't, don't really appreciate, and that users, when they're looking for something local, they might go to that site, but it's not something that they would really appreciate or trust. Eric says, no one would ever do that. Well, yeah. I agree. <laughs> Hopefully. In case, case of these ones and uh, the John Webmaster Center, uh, where um, uh, I don't know what you call it in English. Somebody who helps you when you're locked out of your door. Um, locksmith. Locksmith. Oh, locksmith. Oh, oh. Yes. Darkness, yeah, bad, 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 yeah. bad, 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 bad thing. Um, I know lots about them. I posted a lot of pages uh, where the almost same content, but uh, all uh, with different names of locations and not cities, but quarters uh, <laughs> in the same city. And that mm -hmm, mm -hmm, is something I guess Google would not appreciate too much. <laughs> Well, having worked at yellowpages.com and being in that local space, like basically every single, every single local company was doing some form or fashion of, you know, city name inject like from a database and then grab Wikipedia data or grab like demographic data and throw that on there. And then um, like people would say, oh yeah, we'll go and fill it out with unique content later, but we just need to, to get all these pages out there. And then, you know, a month later, two months later, oh, these pages aren't performing. Uh, we're not going to invest any more time in it. And, you know, they would just sit out there and you would have, like, yeah. thousands or thousands of pages about the same thing. Or, or the weather in the certain location or the time in the certain location. It was just ridiculous. I think it's something that also, like, the, the recent algorithm updates, they've been picking up more and more on that. So especially something like Panda that takes a look at the, at the quality of the content. And uh, when we can see that overall the, this website or this collection of websites just has a lot of low quality content, then that's something that uh, the website would have to clean up on a larger scale to kind of um, have that resolved again by the algorithms. Or they would walk, uh, what they do in Toronto is they walk into, we have something called shoppers, like it's, it's like a drugstore. And uh, you can go to our mail uh, thing here, and then they just go to each and every corner, grab an address, and then slap a map on there. Rather than they got smart, so they not they don't do those pages anymore. They just open up like uh, those uh, places. Claim a map and no and have no URL, and do about like hundreds and hundreds of them. <laughs> yeah, it's. I, I think it's something where it's easy to do something problematic and probably a lot of work to clean that up and to change that around into something that's really higher quality that uh, is longer lasting in the end. That's what's going to last, yeah. <clears throat> are, are there any plans, John, to introduce sort of Penguin and Panda into local search? Because I know that it's, it's interesting. You see some sites that got completely just hammered. And they're still actually ranking in local search. Um, I don't know. I don't know the the specifics there. Like it's an interesting dichotomy that like on the one side the organic search results like people did get hammered, but then you just see them like they won't be anywhere, and then suddenly you put in a local term, and there they are just peeking up. Yeah, once the map is gone, he's the guy's not worth nothing. Yeah. Well. I I don't know how uh, Google Places kind of handles those those rankings there. It's a different algorithm. Uh, when I asked Jade, Jade uh, from the map team, and she said that, yeah, I mean, it's it's a different algorithm altogether, right? Did you guys ever want to do it so. all in one, like a one? I mean, it's it's completely different data there. So especially when you're looking at uh, local listings, you have information about the location. To some extent, you can have a verified location. You have things like uh, verified reviews, those kind of things that all kind of come together. 
that uh, we, they don't have in web search. And uh, on the other hand, we also want to make it so that businesses that don't have a otherwise normal web search presence still kind of have a chance to appear in the search results because there are still local and relevant businesses. So even if they don't have a website, they should still appear somewhere in the search results because people want to find them. Yeah. This tying up there is now of the um, of a Google Plus page with your with your business. I mean that that should help filter stuff, shouldn't it? Filter filter the uh, the poor quality as you've got the triangulation of the, the local places, the Google Plus page, and your website. I don't know. Yeah. That's definitely a possibility that that can help. OK, guys, I have to head out. Um, I wish you guys another fun half hour. And Thank I'm you very much for dropping by, John. Thanks, have a good weekend. John. Thanks, John. Have Pleasure a good weekend. Always. Bye, John. Bye. I think uh, Matt wants to join the Hangout if I'm um, Sash? Matt? Yeah, I think no, he wants around to... now, is he? Uh, okay, well, if, if he's around. He's here. Matt is somewhere. Sash is Matt today. It's Matt is Sash. Mm. Oh, I see. Okay, I'm sorry. It's a technical thing. Yeah. Yeah, so like you were saying, using the plus one page, but there's a lot of uh, people that would take that uh, advantage and then, you know, abuse that. So, uh, I don't I think know. Maggie's point is that <laughs> when you tie it to the, the plus platform, it yeah. makes it, it, you get additional signals, right? Like whether or not that account is being used, whether or not someone's actually signing into that account. That there are other signals that potentially could be used, whether or not yeah, well, they're using uh, them or not. Who knows? The citations is a big one. So, like you can't you can't just go out there and start uh, hammering 140 numbers. Uh, you know, like it's just impossible. But uh, a lot of people are abusing. Uh, <laughs> but I get I get what you're saying. But people are not stupid these days. They're not going to click on the Google map if there's no website. Like, you know, it's 2012, you know? If there's no website. They're not going to go in there. Again, like, Sash, remember you were saying a long time ago, like the locksmith, if you're out there, you don't care if he's got a website or not. So maybe he can win. Maybe that industry can win in that sense, but not. Like, if you're a business, you might, I mean, you have no, to. No, it's have actually. It's quite strange because the other day I was coming back. Um, uh, strangely enough, from from the pub, and a, a friend of mine was standing on the doorstep. He'd gone and locked himself out, and guess oh. where I found him? A locksmith. <laughs> Clicked on the map, and he didn't care if he he had a website or not, right? Oh no, Go Google Local isn't a feature yet. It was just straight organic listings, you know. Oh, okay, perfect. But local is still sh shaky over here, you know. Yeah. Hey guys, I had something I wanted to mention to uh, Richard actually, if, if you guys don't mind. Um, Richard asked a question uh, on uh, John Mew's last hangout about Penguin. Um, I don't know if you're still having a problem with Penguin sites, you're just asking for <coughs> academic purposes. But uh, all the sites I had with Penguin, I was able to fix. So if you want to hit me up, I can definitely tell you what I did. I was very surprised to hear that. Yeah. Um, I was very surprised ahead, to Josh. hear. Sorry, I was very surprised to hear John say that uh, those sites haven't uh, been fixed yet because uh, I've, well, I thought I was fixing Penguin. They went down on April 24th, and I, I, I deleted some links and changed some on-page stuff, and they got better, so I assume that was that. But, you know, you never know, of course. But Yeah. So just to give you a little bit of background without taking over on this, so I've had to audit maybe 50 to 60 sites that have been hit by Penguin. Uh and you know, I've seen what people are cleaning up and what's happening with a lot of it. So it was just when I heard from you that you you were you mentioned that you had recovered a few sites. I was just more interested to see if there was any data behind that. But from what I've gathered, it is possible to recover traffic, but it, you're not actually recovering from Penguin. You're actually offsetting Penguin by making things better. If that makes sense. 
Yeah, no, that, that, that makes total sense to me, uh, and that could very well be the case. Um, just the sites that I've had that were hit by Penguin, it was, uh, you know, a waterfall effect in the uh, Google uh, Analytics. I mean, you know, uh, unless multiple algorithms hit it uh, at the same time, uh, you know, it's a very pronounced effect in the analytics, and so I'd be very surprised to see that it was different, uh, different algorithms that I was actually fixing and not Penguin. No, it, it, I don't think it's there's different algorithms, but basically from what John has been saying and what I've managed to wiggle out of him, uh, Penguin is a score that's applied to your site if they don't like the look of it. And basically, your site can still rank. If you have enough good signals, they will offset the bad. And the bad will still be there, and you may not lose as much ranking. And as you clean things up, you may get to the point where you tip it back so that your site, the good signals are outweighing the bad but the bad signals are still there. The only way to get rid of the bad signals is when they refresh. That's what John said today, just earlier today. So that was something that I hadn't heard admitted straight up because John had told me otherwise before. When did he say uh, it's going to refresh, do you know? He didn't. He wouldn't say. He just said that they won't an announce that, but he said they're still working on it. And I, I spoke, there's a lot of the, the, the quality team, the web spam team, are actually here in Ireland. So I know that there's... I've heard a few things from various people. There's a lot of testing going on. Actually, they have a lot of testing teams here as well, and they're testing various stuff. I don't know whether that's true or not. That's just what I've heard. But uh, from what John said today, he said there's been a refresh, and some sites would have got taken out. I don't really go for that, but uh, uh, he seemed to say, <laughs> yeah, that until, until it's refreshed, you won't actually see whether your cleanup efforts have had any effect. Well, as I understand it, there's two parts to Penguin. There's the on-page part that's looking for keyword stuffing. Yeah. And then if there's any outlinks on that page, uh, some of those links can be turned into poison and uh, hit the uh, the target uh, mm -hmm. coming off of that page. Yeah. So I, I see what he's saying about the keyword stuffing. If they if that has to be an off-site process, an on-off an off uh, time process, then they're not going to be looking for that, and th those pages are not going to get back in mm -hmm. until the keyword stuffing and hiding is removed. But if you remove the link from site A to site B, and site A is the penguin hit site, mm. if you remove the link from there, then that's what I did, and, that, and site B incrementally got back up to its old traffic on the, all the old queries. Yeah, I, I think what's happening there is that uh, your good signals, again, are, are getting better, so they're outweighing. But as from what John told me, I'm, uh, I can sort of read between the lines a lot of what Googlers <laughs> are telling me. That even though uh, <laughs> what you're saying is that maybe it's these bad pages that can get back in when they're cleaned up, I actually don't think that's the case. I don't think that many of those bad pages are ever getting back in. I think that it's purely down to uh, it takes so much for them to, to figure out what's going on with these backlinks that uh, even though you've removed that link, they may see that it's gone, but actually your, re your, your penguin score, for want of a better way of putting it, is not going to change until they, re until they refresh the data. Which mm, I find really that's interesting. Five six, five, six months or something, right? I, I don't know. I, I think that there's part of it is that they, they, they obviously are testing it a lot, and I can understand that. I mean, they know what they're doing, and I'd say there's an also a part of it that they're quite happy to let people linger for a while because they, they don't want people to know how to back engineer this. They, they just don't want people to really understand that, oh, oh it was this, these links. Like, it's sort of like they're happy for you to throw the baby out with the bat water to some extent because they want to sort of push you back. Um, but I'd, I'd fully agree. Uh, it's certainly one thing we should see. Uh, Google needs to crawl the pages where the links have been removed and uh, to refresh their index, and this takes some time. Yeah, but I think also that the... the uh, show a certain patience yeah. and uh, wait for a week or two or maybe three until things are fixed. And um, I guess in most cases, uh, if the links were really removed, uh, Google will see it in a appropriate time. Yeah, but I think that what, what, what they do with Penguin is probably so computationally expensive that it actually, it, it takes them, you know, it's a huge amount of power to process this. So that's the other thing. You're going to be waiting a while, I think, no matter what, because they can't just run this willy-nilly. Hmm, I find that very interesting, because that's a little different than what I've been finding, but, but hey, uh, uh, I appreciate the information. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I don't know. I'm only giving my observations. I mean, like I say to everybody, like a lot of this stuff is opinion. It's it's 90% opinion, 10% fact. But like I, I've had to look at and work with some sort of bigger sites that have been hit by this, so I can sort of see uh, at a at a fairly large scale what's happening with it. So 
for the bigger sites, what you did was you went and cleaned up all the content and all the pages. Uh, no, with with most of the bigger sites, when you're looking at you're talking about brands, you, you tend to find that their pages are quite clean. You know, it's they're not they're not getting penalized for what they're doing on their sites per se. You know, they they tend to be pretty clean. They don't want to put anything up there. They're too afraid to put anything up there, really. Yeah. And it's nearly always backlinks. So the type of people who are going to get recover from this are the people who had bad links pointing at their sites. They're not the type of people who had lots of shit on their sites in the first John place. Was saying, John was saying that if you cannot remove those backlinks at all, if you can't get a hold of those old webmasters, um, submit uh, a consideration <laughs> and tell them that. Yeah, but the problem with that is that if you submit a reconsideration request and you've been hit by Penguin, you're just going to get an automated response saying uh, there is no manual penalty against your site. So you should, you should clear one thing. Uh, if you get a, uh, a message in the webmaster tools, um, that's always a manual penalty, and not uh, automatically or yeah. um, algorithmic penalty. So we say, right. if you get such a notification, um, you will do right and good to. Um, set up a list, uh, maybe a, a Google spreadsheet or something like this um, that you include in your reconsideration request. And you should do that and if Google gets the chance to see that you did your very best to remove those bad links, um, they will accept that probably, I guess, at least. Oh, wow. Yeah, I suppose you could petition them to help you, and if you wrote a, a moving enough uh, request, they might go in and all the uh, links that are uh, holding you down that are on the, on the manual side, quote unquote, they might be able to help you there. But I don't think they can help you with the, the Penguin algorithm that seems to be not controlled by them. They can't lift uh, something that was struck by Penguin. Uh, that's what I heard. Right. I think you can lift it, but what you're doing is you're not lifting Penguin. You're just making your site better, and you're getting traffic for doing that. That's what that's what I think is happening. I've seen it on a lot of sites. It's funny, like Josh, some of the the, the graph you showed me, I've seen very similar. I'd say very high correlation, even with the dates. And I suspect there's also some changes they've made along the way, very quietly, that have actually impacted sites that have given them a little bit more traffic also. See. And again, not suggesting that anything you were doing wasn't getting the results you you were saying you were, but I think there's probably a lot going on. It's very hard for anyone to discern one, one factor of what's going on. See, this is this is exactly the same the thing. I mean, from what I've seen, um, there's there's a lot of stuff that gets sneaked out every time there's a big algo algo update, like Penguin Panda, what have you. Right, and right. It's just kind of like the noise there totally drowns out all the little tweaks and yeah. twirls and whatever else that's going on, absolutely, there's no question about it. And they're happy to do that very often. It's, oh, it suits you their, better believe it. It, <laughs> it suits their goals, so what can you do? Hey guys, um, can I can I say something? Sure. Okay, I'll put the problems in the other way. There is another type of links. I mean, I had a site from a client which was giving links to the uh, websites from his uh, group and he was uh, manually taking action against him because somebody complained uh, about his website that he was selling those links instead of uh, just giving them as a I don't know well uh, he was taken down he was received the penalty he tried to fix it before he contacted me well, he didn't have much much success of it. He put three petitions, three reconsideration requests, all went back negative, and then he contacted me. I put no follow on those footer links. Then I resubmitted the reconsideration request. I've talked even with John, because I wasn't sure if that's the only problem. John said, hey, let me take a look. It's all okay now. Just submit again the reconsideration request, and you should be fine. I've, re I've resubmitted and the website came back uh, to a page rank 4 in, I don't know, two weeks after I submitted the fourth reconsideration request. So you put so, no follows, you put no follows in all the footer, like all the links? Yeah, yeah. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't say this one is good and this one is bad. He had like, I don't know, maybe 
five or six links in the footer, but it was on all over the website. So then my question is, uh, are we allowed to put links in the footer of all our pages toward our group websites? Because, I mean, you have a website, it's part of a group. It's normal to link toward your other websites from the group, no? To See, as far as, it, as far as it goes and as far as I'm normally advising people, um, um, the footer is a notorious link dumping ground, okay? Uh, and to me, if it's in the footer, it's going to get looked at with a magnifying glass. So on every single page of the site, you have a, I don't know, 5,000 page site, 5,000 links, thank you very much. Um, to me, yeah, link by all means, but I think the no follow is probably really a really good starting point, you know, un unless it really really is internal and secondary navigation and stuff like that, it's all good, you know. But if you're if you're gonna link to, I don't know, from your sandal to your cowboy boot site five thousand times no, I, I don't know, I wouldn't be comfortable with that person. I think there it depends go. who you are. There's there's different rules for different people. <laughs> you know? That's correct. No I, I, I've true. worked with enough I work with quite a few global brands like over the years and like certainly they have lots of different sites and link interlinking between them they have to do it, you know? It's 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 normal. It's part of the course. It's a requirement nearly so and I would say that they had strong enough backlink profiles that never caused any trouble, but it really depends on what you define as group. Okay, well, let me see, show you an example. The, this, this is, okay. This, Look at the, but I, I put a, say this is the thing. Uh -huh, I put in chat a, a website, it's a front door, it's a well-known brand uh, for okay. real estate. And in the footer, you can see, well, I'm, I'm technically, uh, technically is not the footer, it's on the body, but I'm saying on the footer so you know to look at the bottom of the page. Uh, it's part of the scripts network. If you see at the very bottom of the page, you will see the scripts networks, LLC, linked directly. And of course, the first round of the links you will find over there in hdtv.com another link from the same group. Okay? So it's not paid links, it's just a normal linking between the same network. Okay? So, I mean, should I put no follow over there? No. I mean, come on. It's 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 sometimes it's not outrageous. I haven't caught you yet. But this isn't the site that you were talking about with the no follow, yeah? No, no. I can I can show you the no follow. Ju uh, just out of curiosity, because that yeah, one, yeah. like you say, it says this is our network, so it's all owned by the same parent company. I'd say. Ah, uh, no, no, no. He 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 wouldn't have. Uh, uh, hold on. Yes. I think this one it is. Uh, you can look at the footer. It's a, a review website, uh, and he's doing a lot of uh, computer it's reviews. Redirecting to PC. And yeah. PC. I got it. Yeah. The, just Google Plus doing that to you. Yeah, the affiliates over there. You will see AMD uh, and a lot of websites over there in the footer. I mean, uh, it's on the last white zone. Okay, I want to tell you something about this. Can I ask you a question? Do you check uh, these pages? Just as a curiosity, like, I don't know how long you've been dealing with them, but we, do you check them in analytics how all of these pages are doing? Is there, like, is there a lot of traffic to all these uh, footers? All these pages in the footer? Mm, not quite. Because if I'm, not, if, I'm if I'm seeing that there is no, uh, there is no traffic to those footer links, right? Okay. Myself as a webmaster, I would remove them. Uh, why should you keep them? Well, it's it's uh, his decision, the owner of the website, okay? He wanted them there because uh, the link says partner and affiliates. Yeah, but that's, that's probably uh, what got him dinged, by the way. Just those three words, partners uh, and yeah, affiliates. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. That yes. got him yes. dinged. It's not the links, it's the, it's the words that you have there, <laughs> partners and affiliates. That's okay. what got him dinged, yeah? Okay. If you had put that in with nothing else, I'd say you'd be okay. Okay, then I got it. Okay, it's uh, also, all how you put it. Also, John mentioned something recently very interesting um, that an attribution link in the footer is usually more respected than an exact match link. So, if you had uh, just URL links or the website name, as long as it's not an exact match keyword, you might be fine there as well. Yeah. Well, I'm seeing the uh, front door uh, website that is doing just fine. He has those links. It's Everybody knows that they are from Scripps Networks because it says all over the website and HGTV H, uh, because it's their brand. 
So they are linking towards all their websites and above, right on top of the page. Also, there are a lot of links, I mean six or seven, uh, to HDTV magazine and so on and so forth. Okay, HGTV gardens. So all of these are links. So it's just fine to have your website linked over your network, right? Yeah, of course. It, it's all a threshold, of course. So I mean, uh, you don't you don't want to. It's very difficult to remove links before a problem happens because you ha run the risk of removing in you know a link that they're still valuing. Your ranks can go down if you remove links that you think might look bad to you, but Google actually doesn't care. But at the same time, if you see something that it's right out of whack and you know they're going to be releasing a big uh, update uh, very, very soon, it might be a good idea to remove some of the worst offenders or try and be as low under threshold as possible. It all depends, in my opinion, how risk averse your client is. I have clients who are, who are very uh, risky. I have clients who are very risk averse and they want the, only the cleanest above board tactics. So it really depends on your client, I suppose. <coughs> The other thing to think about, though, is that remember that you're going to get a visit from someone who's going to actually look at your site. So you look at the quality reviewers guidelines, and you'll see that, like, if you've got a professional looking site, and those links, some of them say to bathroom.com, and some of them say to exact match names, it looks a lot cleaner. Like, if they think your site looks respectable, uh, they're probably less likely going to ding you. So if you look at that frontdoor.com in that footer area, those links that say homes for sale by city and listing Las Vegas real estate listings and all those other city names. The, the whole point of Penguin and Panda is basically to clean up the internet so that there isn't any kind of manipulation, that sites are ranking where they should be ranking. And looking at those links, those are obviously there for manipulation. No user is going to come down there and click on any of those things or be looking for any of those links down there. So here's those my, things uh, I would probably remove. Here's my competition. I see. This is a competition in Toronto. A competition. Oh, he just, just me? Uh, no, no, no. no. Uh, Come on back to that one though about the there. spammy links. By the way, yeah, the links in the footer—they're definitely. I would agree with you. Like the anchor text is really bad, but I do know as well. I'm pretty sure that someone from Google has said that Penguin actually doesn't look at internal links. Can you guys tell me what you think about this site? I just put it in the chat. Well, um, I was just, uh, Eric said that um, no, no, the no, links no. from the footer, nobody will take a look at them. But uh, look at the last set of links, which is, says Scripps Network Digital. There are a lot of websites which are from the same network. So what's bad of them, with them? <sighs> I mean, it's not there for manipulation, that's for sure. What is the owner want them if there's no traffic in them? Well, there is traffic, of course, because the site has a lot of traffic. Probably somebody is clicking on them. Probably. I don't know. It's the, yeah. it's the mercurial nature of their algorithms. They, they, they can't train the algorithms to be as smart as a human and make a judgment call. So they just they try and find the best signals they can, and there's a lot of false positives. And so, you know, in my opinion, SEO as a job is trying to not be a false positive. Um, I just put a link in the chat. Can you guys please look at it? Tell me what you guys think, please. Yeah, yeah the, the locksmith site. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is my competition. This is what he does. Dear oh that, me. That that's pretty looks, good, that's, eh? That's, what, that's a That footer. looks pretty that's spammy funny, to me. Man. That's a footer. That's, that's what I'm talking about. It's ranking number. Yeah, one. but you know what? Even though a site can have all these bad things going against it, uh, it, it can have just a few good things and it can rank well. You know, you get a lot of stuff that you might look at and think that it's crap and it's shit, but it can rank well. And even if it's got crap backlinks, if it's got a few good ones, very often they can outweigh the bad ones. Can I ask you a question? Doesn't the site have like uh, ten strikes and you're out? What's sure, and they're and they're only at five strikes, so to speak. Well, I thought there's like different. <clears throat> you know, yeah, but it's it's ultimately it's a balancing act, and and as Richard just said, you know, you can you can turn around, and you can have one really decent link, and it's going to make up so much ground for for a load of really spammy, crappy ones. Anyways, I'm just I want to show you this, and this site is just uh, exploding right now, and it's it's really I mean it's it's spam to, it, it's 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 just it's Burger King. It's it's the full man. It's the full combo, extra combo. Well, it looks to me like it might be a good candidate for a spam report. I don't know. I mean, Why this, though? this is affiliate. This is affiliate of, uh, you know, of like, 
He's got, uh, I don't know, like... Bar Baruch, it's people. your civic Canadian duty, and I can say this because I'm Canadian as well, it's your civic Canadian duty to report that website to the spam report, and also paid links, because they're probably doing that too. Casper doesn't care. A lot of sites that are on the wall like that, you can take them down pretty easily. But Casper... But listen, it's all about, anyway, everything is relative. If they've got 10 sites in the top 10, they're all doing the same stuff, they leave them be. You Just look at car insurance. I had to work in the car insurance niche recently, and you want to see how bad that is. <laughs> As black as it comes. Well, no, it's just ah, yeah. it's complete spam. I, I need to speak to you about cars, Richard. Remind me. All right, okay. <clears throat> so, I, I, what are you speaking of? Okay, insurance. So, like, let's say you have a hundred websites. Okay, like this person has, I don't know, maybe one thousand websites all around the world. Okay, I put it in the chat. And all of these websites are ranking number three for every single city. How in like I just don't get it. It's 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 killing me. What's the, what's the question? I see your exasperation, but what's the question? My, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I just I. How do you battle like against that? You know, like you can't, right? I mean, that's why I asked someone else, and they just said I cannot even do this industry. But I challenge myself, so I go to you know a very challenging industry. But I mean, even if you report him, you know. Now I, I hear what you're saying, and uh, I mean. I'm just trying to one... explain to you guys, like you know. I'm I'm battling against very competitive industries. Like I do a lot of competitive ones, and this one is the most competitive one. You know, I'm in. Well, and it's hard for me to really play the game. I mean, I'm playing tennis, but it's like I gotta play with like a special tennis racket or something. You know, like I don't know how to explain it. You're talking well, also about locksmith services. Both this one and the one I. I, I mean, Look at look at it. He has only internal links. Yeah, that's why his rank is only two. Because probably if he removes at least from the first page a lot of these links, he will that's have. Well. Yeah, he was. He will. He will have on the first page maybe rank four or five. I don't well, know. Do he actually do even better. Well, I, I'm not seeing any spam. I'm sorry, but I'm not seeing any spam here. It's only his own links. He doesn't link anywhere else. He's linking. Uh, toward his internal part of his website, okay? So, uh, wow. from my point of view, this is not spam. Yes, it is. Why is that? Please explain. Sash, can you explain? <laughs> <laughs> are we talking about the locksmith or the Toronto locksmith? Which site are we actually both, both. talking about right now? Uh, locksmithservices.ca so Locks the reason I would I would categorize no, it go, as go on. so I would categorize it as spam because it's a terrible user experience and part of what in Google's mandates is also to provide <laughs> users great user experiences and if you're giving them a bad user experience I mean it may be not in the traditional form of spam but it's visual spam it's user experience spam it's not happy for users when they arrive there I disagree what? I disagree, I say. I don't think there's anything wrong with his site. I'm sure his site converts pretty well. I'd say it's all in the, the proof is in the pudding. You know, if people go there and they fill the form, I'd say that's a pretty good site. Like, I mean, I, exactly. I don't like it, but I'd say it works pretty well. I don't see anything on there that would su suggest to me that someone didn't spend some money on a decent design, etc., etc. One man's spam is another man's great site. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what I uh, if you look at the site, your first impression when you land on the site, it's clean and you have space in it. Agree that the footer it's horrible, but yes. that's only above, the footer. Above if, the, fold, the site is fine. Yeah, but it's uh, Google said uh, right now. Ah, but this is where we're talking manipulative. <laughs> yeah, right. But Google has an algorithm. Okay, he's not human. It is not human. So. <laughs> Is the discussion we had earlier? Do as the robot says. Yeah, sure. 
So if I could just jump in for a second, I wanted to say something to Brooke there about he 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 showed some exasperation earlier, and I share that exasperation about uh, you know a lot of people are obviously got thousands of sites and they're doing their SEO really well. Just just don't forget that Google is not the only search engine, and 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 uh, linking and content is not going to be the only game in SEO. Very soon, social is going to uh, start picking up much more speed, and right now it's it doesn't have very much weight at all. But uh, John, John Mueller just recently uh, mentioned in the last Hangout, uh, not this one, but one of his ones he recorded earlier, that social signals don't have much of a, a, a weight now, but they're going to have a, a weight in the very near future. Here's so, what's going to happen to him. Have a look. Here's Copyscape. Sorry, here we go again. That he's going to be, the site will be banned soon. You'll see. Well, that, Check out yeah. That's entirely possible. All I'm saying is that you know, if you can't compete with them in organic, then go paid. If you can't go paid, then do some mobile apps because mobile apps are going to get much crazier as well. It's $100, not, it's $100 per click. Then that's what you got to do. If that's the market, that's the market. The other thing, this, Josh, though, is that the outside of the U.S., it's a, sort of, it's a different environment. You've got in Europe where Google is like doing probably 90 to 95% of all organic search, all. And in some countries, easy, it's up to 98, easy. 99, yeah? And I've heard yeah, that yeah, I internally. Move, I need to move you with, uh, to Europe. For, why, to, to, to be playing more with Google? No, I don't think so. Guys, I, I'm expecting you in Europe. For locksmithing, you can go Facebook then, right? Locksmithing is a local service, so go Facebook then instead. Facebook? Have you tried paying ads on Facebook? Oof. I have. They didn't do so well. But no, I think maybe we've that all had me. that experience. No, we've all had that experience. Facebook it's, is it's, not doing well at all. It's it's not like people don't want to engage there in sort of any sort of commercial activity. Basically, they just want to like look at babies and look at the dogs and puppies. And do you hear me, Maggie? Puppies. Yep. <laughs> Puggy's Puggy. got her own page. There you go. There's Puggy again. <laughs> well, uh, what Josh said earlier, I've heard John uh, said this uh, on uh, Monday, uh, on the hangout on Monday, that soon uh, all this. Um, social media signals will come into place so it's time to build the social media from 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 the scratch but they're already in play if you do a lot of searches you'll see if you if you look at the little there's a little silhouette of a person beside so many search results now that they're from your friends and the friends of your yeah, friends and your circles. Mm -hmm. it's all there already it's not coming it's there it's just that it's it's not going to be the same for some of the commercial stuff uh, you know, for informational, it'll be there a lot more. For the commercial stuff, yeah, soon they'll be able to figure out, like, you know, X or Y bought this from this company, so, and they're your friend, they're going to show it to you. And yeah, your Google I, Plus page is coming up in results now. Yeah, true. Yeah, you've got your local on one side, you're on the right hand side of, of the SERPs, Absolutely. and you've got your Google Plus page there, you know, bang in the, in, in the middle, close to the top of the organic. It will come into place more. Yeah. And it will count on rankings more. Yeah, it's true. I've seen it all over. They are on the, but they don't count so much on rankings right now. No. Well, well, we have something innovative uh, to fix this whole situation. So something different, something completely different that will stand out, and it's working right now. So that's what I've done right now. But uh, I just wanted to share some footer links with you guys. Sharing the love. <laughs> right. I'm going to have to. Get Give you guys sort of the three minute warning and that's light out in a second. I've got a, a phone appointment. So, um, hi Michael, uh, just joined us. Is, was there a question you had just before we, we kind of wrap this up or were you just sort of coming in to say hi? Not really. There you go. No problem. <laughs> right. Anyone else before we uh, kind of finish up or? Uh, I have another um, question, another different right. question. Guys, uh, since Google gets more and more local, it's advisable to get your website in the city where, he, where the website acts, where, he, where the website is picking up uh, the customers, or it doesn't Here. matter so much? Hang on. So you're talking about getting your website hosted in the target city, or yes. what are we talking about here? Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> Is this mattering somehow? Make absolute minimal difference. Um, as as long as you're not, not hosting on the other side of the planet, and even then, you know it shouldn't make a difference if you're I don't know if if your business is in Stuttgart and your 
your website is actually hosted in Munich, that should be absolutely minimal. Yeah, it doesn't matter as long as it's, uh, you know, I mean, if you can find a server, like a local place ne near you where you are, then um, that would be a good idea. A reputable company, you know. Uh, well, I, I was telling you that because not every time you can put your current local city keywords within the website. If you're selling vacations, for example, and you're targeting the city area, you can't always put, uh, I don't know, the city name because you're selling vacations on the other side of the planet, but you're targeting only local people. So you come up with some good why, content. Why do I, I don't know, for, for, the, for the last 15, 20 minutes, I've been progressively feeling more and more like I'm back in 2003. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not sure I get that, but anyway, probably um, I was I didn't put my questions correctly. The thing is, you're selling vacations, okay? You can't target your local right. area if your website is in in other town. I don't know if you're in New York and you're selling vacations on only for people in New York, okay? All right. And your website is hosting in LA. Josh, have you heard of I Travel 2000? Uh, yes, yes, I have. Okay, so Josh has heard of iTravel. I've heard of iTravel. We both live in Canada. What I suggest is Google is not everything, and what I would say is basically go target a TV station and, uh, you know, pick up your brand that way and then go back to the site where you are and write some great content about all the areas where you are located at, some good content, and that will help you. Don't forget that um, the uh, the the travel agents living in City X also should have a Google Plus uh, uh, yeah, exactly. address. Exactly. So that's why they're going to rank for for people if they're in San Fran. That's why they're going to rank for San Fran, right? That's right. Okay. Then, then it comes in place uh, the social media. Okay, I got it. TV ads. TV ads would help for travel sites. Okay. Right. Thanks. I'm really going to have to wrap this up, uh, otherwise I'm going to be late for my call. So um, thanks, everybody, for joining in. It's been a good uh, session. Say hi to, uh, say hi to uh, Glicaria for me, please. Oh, uh, will do. <laughs> right, I'll catch you guys next week. Take it easy. Bye. Cheers, Josh. Thanks. Bye-bye.